game, like after every game, you know, just say, hey, can I cast your game? Things like that. It's kind of kind of a pain to do that. Uh, now, we are in a team game here, and this is going to be one heck of a mouthful, but it's going to happen. So I'm going to this is the first time I've done a stream in a while, but it's the first time I've done a team game on a stream in a longer while. So I'm going to introduce the players as fast as I can. It does look like it is a mirrored sieve matchup. And I need to quickly figure out where everybody's located uh, by looking at the mini map. And uh, looks like I figured it out. Yes. Okay. So let's do this, guys. Let's do this. We have Wishmaster here playing as the Turks, and he is the flank for his team. His pocket then is Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath. I'm going to struggle with names because I don't know these players. I could just say color. But. Uh, Cho'Gath is here playing as the Huns as his pocket. Then in the gray, we have Believe playing as the Koreans. And then the other flank is Smoke playing as the Spanish in the yellow. Now, across from Smoke to the right, it's actually quite a distance actually, but in the blue is Blue. <laughs> and he's playing as the Huns. Pocket for Blue is... Gary, who is probably the most well-known player here, playing as the Koreans. And Divine Touch is his other pocket. Divine Touch playing as the Spanish. And then the last player not mentioned is Marino here, playing as the Turks. And if I'm not mistaken, it's actually Turks as flanks on this side then. So yes, it's Wishmaster and Marino, both playing as Turks. The other side, uh, it's Huns and Spanish. Yes, Huns and Spanish. So, that'll be interesting on both sides, actually. Um, from Twitch, let's see, someone asked a question. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I can't read the chat while I'm casting all the games because there's a lot to focus on, but I did want to say this, actually, once I read it. Um, I really enjoy watching Twitch on my TV, and... So if you get a if you get a Chromecast, it's a Google Google Chromecast. It's like thirty U.S. dollars, uh, and you have an HDMI port in your TV. You can send like Netflix or anything that you have on your phone to your television. And though Age of Empires is not like the best with the graphics, it's still really fun to do. And uh, I would definitely recommend it if you guys are big stream watchers. And you can still do the chat on your phone then as well. So anyway, let's look at the flanks maps. Uh, Marino is here. And we already saw this wood line. The gold's to the left hand side, and that's quite exposed actually, not that easy to wall. We might see the barracks in front of that gold. There's quite a difference in level with these players, so it could be interesting to see what these players do uh, with the uh, choices and unit choices, build orders, things like that. Uh, apart from that, no real resources of importance on the back. I guess there is a stone, but seeing as. They're a flank. I don't think they'll be going to stone for Janissaries or anything. The other flank, looking at the gold, it's actually up here on the hill. Now this map you can actually wall off right here quite easily. I can see that right off the bat. And so that's going to be really nice. It's going to secure the both golds potentially and a couple extra wood lines. On the back, there's not an awful lot secure either. Uh, I guess there is actually a nice little tree wall there for them. But that's, that's the gist of it there for those guys. I remember Blue is down here playing as the Huns, and you see the wood line here for Blue, also the main gold. That's quite exposed as there's no tree lines or anything here. Might need to see the barracks out in front of that, and we actually do see the barracks just below it, and that might indicate a Drush, this gold villager that is, because, or at least man at arms, it, who knows, definitely going to be seeing something with this barracks, I, I assume, in the near future. Uh, then smoke what smoke's doing remember smoke is spanish versus huns and <clears throat> one could say that could be hard for the spanish player but also if the spanish player were to drush as well that could actually be quite favorable i think if you can get the conquistadors out maybe in the castle age because the spanish player is going to be really important i think um but definitely definitely no drush going to be probably clicking up any moment now actually after luring in these deer and that's about it. I It's hard for me to address the pockets, and the pockets aren't really that important. And, alright. 
Donald Trump. Good to see you, man. I'm glad you love me. I'm not voting for you, but I'm not voting for anybody, so... <laughs> in before everybody gets angry that I'm not voting for anybody, but... Um... So smoke is clicked up to the feudal age, and remember, this is really important we pay attention to these flanks. That's going to be where most of the action is happening. He's going for these back trees here. He's putting the two lumber camps there. And so Smoke is basically going to build as though he's doing a Hun War right now, except he's Spanish. And I'm saying that because he's going to go for a barracks, and then he is going to go for luring these deer, and he will definitely go for the stable. Now, are we going to see a Drush come in? From blue, because, and there it is, I was going to say, we did see that villager on gold earlier. And this would be interesting. I would have probably guessed things would have been happening the other way around. And, well, we have the Drush from the Hun player and Scouts from the Spanish player. Did, oh well, wow, this is actually, he's doing a blind Drush as I like to call it. He actually hasn't scouted his opponent yet. And he's going in for the Drush anyhow. Um, he's taking out the Wolf. He's just sitting here on the gold, but it's risky to do something like this. I think he's still going to maybe get to the berries, but honestly, look at this drush. I mean, it's going to, what, stop these villagers from collecting this deer that had 85 left on it? Uh, I don't even know. I mean, it's not huge. These berries not even going to be fully delayed, as there could be a wall into the TC here. Uh, blind drushing <laughs> is a silly, silly thing. As now up to the feudal age already is yellow. On the other side, drush is coming in from orange actually, and <laughs> uh, green seems to be having a lot of trouble dealing with it. He's going actually for archers. Oh, uh, okay, he's going for archers. He seems as though he hasn't lost any units just yet. He may have killed orange's yes. scout. Because he's killed a unit. I'm looking at the deaths and Orange has lost something. So it's probably his scout. But uh, he's dealing with it quite well over on this side. Over in the other drush. And this will probably be cleaned up in time. But the issue is that Wu needs to bide himself some time. He needs to delay as much as possible. Also keeping his scout alive is going to be really important. And... The archer choice, the, the double range choice is really interesting to me because on it in a team game, it's like the archers are so slow. And we talked about the walling, and the walling's already happened here from orange, and we already are aware that he's rushing, so he's probably going to go for the fast castle. I think green's going to really be struggling here. The archers are not going to do anything against his flank. He's going to have to go to the pocket, I guess. Uh, the scouts actually are just bypassing the drush from blue. And they're going to kill the scout, and they're going to go right to Blue's eco. And I'm going to take a look at... Well, actually, I'm on Blue's point of view right now. And he was collecting these deer er earlier. He built the mill. He needs to build his castle age, or his feudal age buildings to click up to the castle age. And where is he going to build them? Because the scouts are here. I'm not sure. This is actually quite a mess, because one villager isn't collecting any gold right now. He's really scared of these scouts, and he hasn't built the buildings yet, unless I'm missing them. And I don't think I am missing them. So, it's it's not pretty. I think for either flank right now, both green and blue. But saying that, it, things could change if maybe the archers get over here to teal pretty quickly and, and do some harassment. Um, all the pockets have since clicked up to the castle age, though, so... We're going to be seeing everybody, I assume, going with knights, no. which would be the better approach just because they're faster. Uh, even if you're Korean, so you get crappy knights, they're faster units. Yes. And, yep, two stables there from Gary. Uh, confirmed everybody has a stable at this point, whether it's one or two. Uh, Bl Blue's Drush, just trying to delay what he can, which is good. Just walking away, this is good. Delaying the eco, but the issue, I think, is that the scouts from yellow, where are they? Well, they're not here. They seem to be down here. And Gary, <coughs> he's actually wise to it now. I don't know if they're on TeamSpeak or if they're communicating. 
I think they are communicating in chat actually. But he's 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 walled up his eco a little bit, yes. and he's made a spear. He's picked off a scout, and uh, he's probably able to clean that yes. up if he fights here. Now there are the archers, and the archers are coming in from green, slowly but steadily. We got five archers coming in, and are they going to make it to Teal's eco? Well, I just don't know. If you look at Teal's eco, you have the wood line and the gold here. It could be hit, but he's in the castle age and make one night, and he should be fine. He's also going to have the TC there. And green is just content on trying to attack orange. <laughs> and I thought it would probably be easier. I guess if you look at the distance, it would be, be just as easy, easy to go to teal. Um, but he's chosen not to do that. He's going to go to orange. Orange has fletching. Still no fletching actually from green, so... I think with the skirms here with Fletching and a couple archers, these archers here from green are probably going to not really do anything, especially with the knights coming in from teal. Now, blue's on the way to Castle Age. Yellow, who remember went scouts and not Drush, is also on the way up, but he's quite a bit behind. But he does have some support from his pocket. And he is on stone, so I assume he's going to actually try and get out the conquistadors and i'm actually trying to find the stone count is it well he's actually sending a lot more now he will definitely get that castle up just a matter of how strong his eco will be when he gets it up uh now where are the knights going from divine touch divine touch has his knights here and he hasn't quite found his ally with the archers and ally with the archers he's died he's he's died his army has gone down Uh, I think my voice is fine, Jackson. No one else has said anything. It, it could just be maybe the connection, the internet connection or something, but there's a pause now in the stream, but you guys say something if there's an issue. Twitch has been giving me issues consistently for I don't know how long, so you guys will have to say something. Gold. Okay, thank you, Nova. I appreciate it. All right, so as you can see, Gary sending his knights out on this side. Basically, both pockets are helping both sides. No upgrades for anybody's knights at this point, as far as I can see. And Gary's going to have to go back. He did not get the first hit. And what do you know? There's a wolf joining the fight. I seriously need to get a wolf emote. Like, when I get partnered, we need a wolf emote. Like, it'd be perfect. There's a wolf in every game. Like, that's something you can use every game, guaranteed. Uh, so, but anyway, Gary's gonna retreat to this hill, and woo 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 woo, the wolf is attacking the, the knights, but it's really not important here. Uh, I think just the numbers are important. And I said green was gonna have some issues, and I, I have to still agree with that statement. He's he's in the feudal age, and he's stonewalling an awful lot now. Um, I'm not sure why we're seeing so many signals here. I guess... They're just trying to clear up these crossbows or something, and they're both, they're all frustrated that they're not communicating well enough or something, but. Uh, Cab Archers expected here from Blue, and he's going to try and get in here and maybe stop the castle. This is interesting. Yes. All of the villagers running over now from Yellow to try and get this castle up. This Palisade Wall is going to go down. You know what? I think the castle will go up in time just because these villas can run into the TC, but Blue could definitely delay it, and... He could kill a couple vills here as well. I mean, this is a big deal. It's a big deal. He's going to be in range of every villager here for sure. Um, he's just got to focus him down. This castle is at 87%. And now Gary's coming in. He's going to commit and try and get the castle up. I don't know if this is the best decision, but it looks like it's going to work out. He actually hasn't lost a villager yet. And as I say that, he lost one. And the castle's up. He's going to make conquistadors now. And that was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be for him as he gets a TC up on the back. But wow, that was that was clutch. It was lucky. I don't even know if you can call it clutch. Because now these cav archers and these knights, when they run away, they're actually going to receive a shot from the castle as well. So maybe it worked out. Uh, all the pressure seems to be running in with these... <laughs> what is Green doing with these archers? I mean, Tiwa's going to just massacre him with these knights. And there you go. He's going to do that. Um... Sometimes I understand they need to signal for like strategic purposes, but their signals really catch me off guard. Um, Inquisidor's here. 
I'm gonna clear up these cav archers eventually. I don't know why blue doesn't just run. He's gonna lose all of these units. I'm trying to figure out what orange is doing at this point. I feel like he should have some type of army. Yes. And I don't see it just yet. Uh, looks like he's just building TCs. So, my apologies for trying to trying to look all around the map. Looking at the mini map is really important. But um, you know, yellow right now is probably gonna push this back, and he's in a good position with his team, honestly. Just look at the eco. I really like what Teal is doing here. He has two going over to Stone right now, not to mention he has three TCs, so he's probably going to go for a fourth shortly. And if you look at his eco, he's at 55 bills, and he also has a fair amount of knights. He's getting bloodlines now. While green over here, like I mentioned, he's just now, just now on the way to the Castle Age. Really far behind. So we're probably going to have to see Divine Touch do an awful lot in his own here. And he has his knights back there and just uh, healing up. But it seems like action is slowed down. And this is not normal for a team game. So that's why I was a little bit taken off guard. But everyone seems to be booming up quite a bit. And both flanks, of course, for each team seem to be lower in Vils. You can see the spec dashboard. It's kind of hard to say who you favor in this fight. On this side though because blue I don't think he did the best job really with his cav archers he lost a lot of cav archers and these conquistadors are pretty tanky uh, if you look at blues eco I'm actually gonna take a quick toggle over to that now um, he's actually on three TC's and he's going for the university now being as he's on three ranges I think he will be okay in these fights if he keeps his cav archers alive and then gets ballistics at this point he doesn't have bloodlines either so He's up against some really, really strong Conquistadors. He also doesn't have any defense upgrades. It's a huge issue. Uh, what do we have down here? It actually looks like the Knight's coming in then from Teal. I said he's doing a good job. He's on the wood line. He's picked off one Villager, and I'm not sure where Divine Touch's Knights are. Oh, they're actually over here trying to deal with these crossbows, so he's unable to deal with this eco harassment. And this is the issue when you have a flank that is really struggling. You can't be 2v1. You just can't deal with it. And looking at the... There's no upgrades on these knights, so maybe the crossbows will do a lot more damage than they really should. Uh, still with the amount of knights there. Should be able to clean that up. But man, Teal doing an excellent job with clearing out so many villagers here. Uh, speaking of eco-harassment, Gary's actually sending his knights in, but he's probably going to get cleaned up there as he's now going back. How is Blue doing? Well, this hill seems to be really important, and... He still doesn't have bloodlines, he still doesn't have a defense upgrade, but he's doing okay. And if actually, if you look at the vill count between him and yellow, they're actually on the same amount of villagers. So he's in a good spot, I think, uh, better than I thought he'd be. But the conquistadors are actually in here, and again, team play is so important. And now Gary has lost two villagers in the blink of an eye to these conquistadors. And Gary actually can't really do much against this, he's lost three gonna not be able to get that TC up he's gonna lose four wow well he's gonna be lose four uh, maybe even five here I was surprised that one somehow dodged the bullets but conquistadors are just such good raiding tools and these knights from from Gary he's really gonna have to mass them to deal with these conquistadors and he's actually doing that which is surprising but two more villagers going down he's gotten a conversion that is well worth it there for yellow for sure and blue, is he pushed in here yet? Yeah, no, he's not. He's actually going for a siege workshop there, maybe to attack this TC, as he does actually see that, which is nice. Now, green, I can't help but feel is the odd man out this game. He just has his crossbows here. And, I mean, we have five staples here from Teal. So Teal should be able to clean that up quite easily, and Teal's just been running right by green and right to pink. This whole time and divine touch has got to be like Are you kidding me man i mean he's really really having a tough time here he's just now getting bloodline so he's going to be level on upgrades you would think shortly but he was doing an excellent job at splitting up his units and attacking both sides of the eco and um that's just exactly what you need to do now there are a lot of crossbows here i don't think it's going to be enough i mean if you just look at the eco differences Teal is at 90 villagers, and we're looking at 30 less for green. Oh, and green is not patrolling, and green 
what are you doing? He's lost a lot of units. Still, he has a lot more crossbows here. Uh, Orange is coming in to try and help out, and he maybe underestimated how many units were here. And I'm kind of waiting for Teal to clean this up, and he might need to shortly because we are going to probably see these crossbows come in and clear up a lot of Orange's eco, and I'll have to go over to Wishmaster's point of view as... He, he really needs a Maganel here. He really needs a Maganel for sure. He's making a lot of TCs, but he needs a Maganel to try and uh, help himself out. And he hasn't gone for that yes. yet. Uh, anyway, the other side, it's important to pay attention to what's going on. It looks like I think Yellow is about to build a castle here, but he's chosen to build it here in front of his gold, which he is still yet to touch. Blue's pushing in, and he's actually going to go for this TC. He finally got bloodlines, and he's just now getting padded archer armor, so he is getting some defense upgrades on these units. And can he stop this castle? Because last time he couldn't stop the original one, and it really gave Yellow an advantage, I feel. He seems to have rebounded, and I do think that this TC will go down unless Gary does not help him. And it looks like... Uh, well, Believe or or Gray is going to come over and help out and pick off these battering rams, and it has just been much better team play this game, I feel, uh, from Yellow's team, Gray's team, whatever, Teal's team. It's just been so much better. Uh, Maganel there, gonna maybe get a shot on these Cav Archers. Uh, how are these crossbows doing on this side? Uh, well, yeah, they're cleaned up, which is kind of expected. I, I hope I didn't miss a big Maganel shot, but... It was kind of important to be focusing on this fight, I feel. Now, with that push being stopped, that's huge. I mean, these two gold piles, I think the only two remaining after this one then for yellow. So that's a, that's a big deal that he did not allow that push to happen there for blue. Now, Teal is about to hit the Imperial Age as is Gray, so both pockets are going to hit the Imperial Age on the left-hand side, and there's going to be a ton of Cavalier for Teal here, uh, which is really, really nice. And I wanted to say something. I am really surprised how many TCs. One, two, three, four TCs, and now a castle from Orange, and he is yet to have any type of military really do much damage on anyone's eco, to be honest at this point. Uh... I thought green was doing I thought green was doing a bad job but the one thing I did see from green is he came in here and he won a fight and he came in here and he killed a couple villagers on orange he was aggressive he was aggressive even though it might have been a little bit misguided and orange he did come in towards purple at one point but didn't really do anything with that army and he's been kind of campy but so the pocket players are all going to be in the Imperial Age shortly. Blue's still trying to push in here. He's on up on the way up to the Imperial Age, as is Yellow, actually, at the same time. Oh, the Maganel is actually going to do a decent job there, uh, which is interesting because we have Bloodlines and plus two defense on these Conquistadors. That TC just will not go down, though. It's really incredible. Um, it's being repaired. The Cav Archers are there, but, oh, with the one ram, and it's, it's probably going to go down. And that's, that's a big deal. I mean, I'm expecting a lot of pressure on this area just because of the golds, and Blue has done a good job with that. Now, the Korean players are really going to be interesting here, as they can go Elite War Wagon and Hal, but it looks like... Well, I don't see any Elite War Wagons from Gary, actually. Uh, but we do have the Elite War Wagons, and we have Halps coming out from Bray here, and he is going to be in a better situation because of that, if he can sustain it, of course. Now... I'm trying to follow where these Cavalier are going because this is a lot of Cavalier and if I were Cho'Gath here, if I were Teal, I would go straight to the enemy pocket and that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to do that. We do have Divine Touch doing the same thing. He's probably going to be going for Cavalier and Plate Barding, but if Teal is able to kill as many units as possible here before they're upgraded, that'd be good, but he's actually lost a couple to some conversions. He's going to choose to take a fight here, and also Teal did not really fight that early, so he did receive a couple hits. But still, I mean, the upgrades he has are just really important here, as he's actually choosing to run back, and probably a wise decision. Just look at the amount of stables from Divine Touch. He has so many stables that he could reproduce and probably win even with Knights, especially considering he's going to have his upgrade shortly. And now Teal's going to run down this way. Can Gary defend this? Because actually, Gary, remember... 
he's fighting on this area and he's trying to push in and I don't know if he will even have to be successful with that as there's a bombard tower and everything there. Uh, we also have the cav archers here on the back from blue as he's getting a lot of upgrades on them and I don't think yellow alone can actually stop this ball of cav archers from harassing his eco and potentially gray's eco as well. I, I don't think yellow can do that to be completely honest. I mean they brace her, they part the tactics now uh, and they, well, not now, but shortly, and then they will have chemistry. But this one Maganel is actually killing a lot of them, which is really surprising, and he's using these Conquistadors for maximum effect. But just look at these Cavaliers, they're killing Gary's Eco, and Purple has to come over and help, and he's doing that now. The really, really interesting developments here. Remember, at the top side, we do have both Turk players as well, and I'm trying to follow everything. As... Elite Genisseries for orange, and actually no Elite Genisserie for green, but we are going to be seeing similar build orders with Genisseries and Bombard Cans and Hussars, I assume, from them. And that's actually going to be really strong from both players. Uh, Cav Archers, like I said, not really being addressed, and I guess the War Wagons, if they are massed, are going to do a good job at that. I mean, of course, the War Wagons are excellent against against archers, but one war wagon's not going to be enough here. You can see that will go down. Now, Gary's losing this push in a big way here. I mean, Gray is just... He's doing a great job, but also the fact that Gary received that push on his base was a big deal. Uh, he had to address that, and now he's lost this area, and that means Blue could, could shortly die. And Blue, if he does send his cab archers here, He's not going to really be able to deal with these war wagons. There is a lot of mass in this area. It's going to be really, really difficult. But how's it going at the top side? Because it looks like Genisseries, Bombard Cannons, a whole ton of action going on up here as well. And uh, a Castle actually attempting to go up here for Orange. I think he might just get it up because Green's not focusing his crossbows there. Uh, the Hussar is being used really wisely from Green to pick off those Bombard Cannons. And if he takes out this castle, he's going to have a lot of eco to kill. And also, we do see Purple running in with his Paladins as well. Excellent decision, but both sides are kind of losing. And Purple's actually sending in his Paladins. Purple's really, really the savior at this point, I think. He's sending in his Paladins, and the Paladins are going to do an excellent job against these War Wagons. And the one thing that's missing from this army composition from Grey is the Halb, and maybe the Hand Cannons as well. Uh, I think he's really wise to pack up these traps, because if more Paladin were to come in, it could it could really hurt. I actually see this ball of blue back here, and look at this! <laughs> he's still picking off villagers, he's killing as many villagers as possible, and this is actually going to be a ton of free kills. And though these villagers are idle, they definitely would have been tasked at some point. That's actually going to really work out, I think. Um, how's it going at the bottom side? Look at this, we actually have capped rams pushing onto yellow, and yellow seemingly unable to rebound from the initial attack here after losing the TC, and it might be because he is unable to access his gold. And blue is pushing in, now building a castle here. The score lead has changed multiple times now, but the capped rams are going to take out this siege workshop and maybe the castle if the uh, cavalier do not come in, if the war wagons do not come in from uh, yellow and gray. Now at the top side, it looks like Teal has come back in and this is really a topsy-turvy game and it's hard to follow. I have to say that maybe the lack of elite genisserie, if it's still not in from green, is an issue because we did have elite from orange and as you can see here, he has an awful lot of them and he has the bombard cannons coming in now and he may push in and kill some castles. Um, what a series of events. Now, where are these guys trading? Look at that. That is a crap ton of markets. They're going to be trying to trade this way, I guess. So it's important that this fight is won for that team. Now, these guys seem to have safe trade. There's no there's no fights that are really being lost in the path of the trade. However, I will say this is pretty darn close as it looks like still trying to save this castle. Uh, probably will do so. And you, know, you could easily see... Gray push down this way if they choose to do that. Uh, of course, Gary is pushing back this way now himself, and he's going to try and take this castle and the Bombard Tower out. There is a lot of precious gold, but he needs to be careful to actually be careful with his units. He needs to send out the Halbs 
And he doesn't have any. He could almost lose all these Bombard Cannons here, guys. And I sent them out way too early. At the top side, then, it's crazy because Divine Touch and Gary actually have the score lead at this point when they s seem to be losing both sides. I don't know what it is. Um, but maybe it's not for long. The Janissaries. There's just so many Janissaries from Wishmaster. And then a lot of Bombard Cannons here as well. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that Green actually picked off one Bombard Cannon with his regular Janissaries. He doesn't even have Elite. Um, but the Paladins here from Cho'Gath. Green is in a rough spot. He's in a real rough spot. He can't make Elite Janissaries if he does not have the Castles. He's lost one. He will probably lose two shortly. And so it actually looks like we're going to have an engagement here from uh, Divine Touch. And I feel like this is really, really silly engagement. He's saying, like, probably delete the Siege Workshop. But even if the Siege Workshop wasn't there, that would have been a stupid engagement. You're going to lose all your Paladins there. Um, but still, they are maintaining the score lead. And maybe that's because the push on this side is just too strong. And they're actually doing a decent job. Gary has regained a foothold on this hill. He did get the castle up. He has more Bombard Cannons here. And he's sending in capped rams, but this is just a big ball of war wagons and castles and buildings. It's going to take a long time to push this back. And it's still a lot of gold. Like, of course they're trading, but look at the amount of gold available here next to these castles. It's it's ridiculous, really. And in fact, it's so ridiculous that Blue is, is choosing to sacrifice 25 villagers here uh, in front of his castle with the mining camp <laughs> to, to secure it. Maybe he doesn't need them. I don't know. Well, yeah, he's actually at 143 bills, so I guess he doesn't. Um, crazy game. Crazy game. And Marino, the, the issue I think is, is Marino at this point. He's at 135 pop. And I, I don't know what his army composition can really be. I guess he's just going Hussars. Um, let's take a quick look. He, wow, look at his resources, guys. He's not even creating any more villagers at this point. He's at 130, so he doesn't need them. He's just creating Hussars, and you need gold units for sure. He's gonna lose his castles. It's pretty much all on Divine Touch on this right-hand side, and it definitely is a 2v1. Uh, it's Spanish versus Huns and Turks, and it's not gonna be great. Now, still paying attention to this side, we actually have Siege Onager or Gary, and he is sending them out, and you know what? Uh, all this ground is, seems to have been lost, and I have to credit Divine Touch for being on both sides still. I mean, if they're able to hold on the right-hand side for just a little bit longer, maybe they can kill the left-hand side. I, I, I just don't know how this is going to work out. I feel like this is going to be, uh, like, right there, Smoke is saying, we need help here, we are dead, or send gold. But at the same time, look on the other side for the other team. Paladin running in. Uh, Marino's trying to help out with these Hussars. Maybe this just might be the game. The, the Siege Onagers are here. Uh, they're not going to do too great against these War Wagons from Grey. But, man, what a push. Blue is doing a great job. He's going to kill Yellow for sure, I think, at this point. Uh, just like Yellow said, he definitely needs help. Are they going to get the help, and is there going to be any trade raiding from the other team? Is is Orange going to be stopped? I mean, that's a lot of Elite Janissaries. You almost need some Siege Onagers over on this side. You really do to clear this up. And there's no artillery on these Bombard Cannons, so it's 12 range, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, Paladin's coming in here from Divine Touch. He's doing an excellent job. He's going to try and clear out as many units as possible, and he's going for the Bombard Cannons, which is what I was kind of waiting for as many of those as possible and he has killed a lot of elite janissaries there and a lot of bomber can he's gonna clear out every single one well done and also the hussars still coming out they're from marino on the left hand side it actually looks like still losing a lot of ground and <laughs> it is not it is not looking good it actually looks like smoke is uh turning on his team a little bit there as well so that's, that's never good, it's never good. Ooh, wow, look at that. Villager just, like, taking one to the face from the Siege Onager. How do you stop Gary's combination of Halberdiers and Siege Onagers at this point? 
I just, I don't know. Now, someone had said blue has units in enemy trade. I didn't spot that, but that's possible. That's possible. I uh, did have those cav archers out earlier, but certainly at this point, if you look, he's mainly Halb. He's mainly, mainly Halb and Seedram. That's actually a really, really wise move against the Koreans, and the Koreans are really the only thing threatening me at this point. The Spanish player is, is really weak. And he's actually going into Paladin. He, he stopped the Cav Archer. He's going into Paladin. And I want to find where his stables are. Uh, but in a second. Because how's the how's the right side? Oh my gosh. That's the window problem. Because uh, it's a nice day out today. And the window broke. And people are driving motorcycles. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. I live in the country and people are obnoxious. But still pushing this back is Divine Touch. And Marino... Wow, this is this is not looking good. I mean, Wishmaster saying idle, idle, idle. You're, you're having, oh man, this is this is probably the game at this point, guys. Um, unless they unless they do some trade rating. I mean, look at the amount of trade cards here. Unless they do some trade rating, it's probably the game. Uh, they need to they need to stop Gary's Alps. They need to stop his C Jonikers. I don't see them at this point stopping. The Sea Jonagers and Halbs. It's a hard combination to stop. Unless Gray can somehow pull off some snipes and maybe go with his own siege. Um, with the Rams here, it's just it's just perfect against the Elite War Wagons. And believe it or not, on the right hand side, it looks as though Green is pulling this back with Divine Touch as well. And there's the GG. Um, my apologies. I. <laughs> I lost my composure there a little bit, but what a push divine. I, I mean Gary was was Excellent Gary was excellent. I mean just just look what he did here with the bombard towers and you know the siege That was that was great, and we're gonna see a GG here from gray. I think shortly but um, I Think the most impressive player in this game and you guys can of course disagree I think the most impressive player was Divine Touch because Green, though he seemed to really turn it around in the end, like with the Hussars somehow, I don't know how that's even possible against gold units, but it, it, it was possible, I guess. Um, I credit Divine Touch for these victories on the right-hand side and even the victories on the left-hand side as well. It was like he was on both sides. He also at one point had to defend Gary as well because there were units from Teal on his TC. Um, it was well played from Divine Touch, and I'm going to take a quick look at the achievements. I want to credit him, because I feel like he played very, very well. Um, and 302 kills for him, so well done. 302 kills, 209 loss, not bad. And he had a lot of trade profit, and a lot of food collected, so he seemed to be a bit ahead in the eco. Good, and... All that's really not important in a in a long team game, in my opinion. All of these uh, uptimes and research counts and things like that. Uh, Gary had a very high villager count, though, and that's probably why he was able to get Siege Oniger and things like that. And of course, he did probably delete some at some point. But.